Welcome to the Echo Sportscast podcast. I'm Paul McLean. And I'm Dave Dale. Today we have Lisa Hutt. She's the uh, head of uh, athletics at Algonquin, and she's the president of the NDA and the uh, president of NASA. Looks like you're going to have a busy year. Indeed. What did you do to earn all those uh, titles? Um, well, I didn't really earn the title for the NDA president or the NASA president. The way it works is you're on a rotation. Uh, it so happens that Algonquin is on rotation to be the NDA president. So lucky me. Um, and as for NASA, it, this year is NDA's turn to hold the president position. So oh, that's so how I earned that. That's how I got that one. Just good luck, eh? Excellent luck. And uh, yesterday, we're recording this actually on September 12th. Um, on the 11th, you had uh, a meeting at the... Uh, and what was going on at the meeting last night? Uh, it was just our initial executive meeting. So we had that at six, just kind of start up to the year and upcoming events. And then at seven, we had our transfer meeting. So you and Paul uh, know each other well. Uh, you're actually the president of North Bay Minor Softball. Yep, Minor Girls uh, yeah. Softball Association. And uh, we have something coming up where you, uh, the baseball day, September yes. 28th, I Yes, think? yes. So what's going to be going on there, Paul? So, I mean, Jacob Brown's been running this, started it with uh, the men's league, first doing just some games later in the fall. And then a couple of years ago, extended it to um, the youth, the, the boys association. And we would start just, we collectively have some kids that can just sign up. And uh, we put a little all-star team in, in their age groups. They get to play a game on Veterans Field. And it's just a really exciting day, raises money for the food bank. And just kind of celebrates, you know, baseball. It's it's a fun way to get kids out and kids from all the different teams get to play together and have a, a little go before we get ready for the winter. So I think it's really exciting now that uh, to have the Girls Association on board as well. And I think we're going to see some really great things. And what are you guys going to be doing for that day? Yeah, same idea. I think we... We're looking to get some players from every division to form two teams for every division, and then they'll play a game. And I guess the latest news is that we're going to do a game, I believe. Can I announce that? I think you can, yeah. Um, where we're going to do a an open ladies from the softball league play against a baseball team mm -hmm. where um, the game will be split. So four innings will be baseball, four innings will be softball. Oh, well, that's going to be fun. Should be interesting, yeah. <laughs> I'm, I'm really actually looking forward to seeing uh, the baseball players pitch. That's what I'm mostly looking forward to as well. Because I think it's well. a very <laughs> different skill that if they have not practiced before, you're going to see some wild yeah. pitches. I think. I'm hoping maybe someone supplies us some equipment because I'm afraid we're going to be like targets out there. But yeah. Well, it's interesting <laughs> because um, a lot of guys don't play fastball no. anymore, so yeah. they're not going to be used to that ball coming from down. That's low, right. Right. Yeah. I'll have to talk to the kids on our team because they've got all the different, you know, sliding gloves and protective arms yeah. and leg things. So, yeah, I'll, I'll grab some of that stuff yeah, from yeah. the kids and yeah, get, do them, that. get you guys all protected. <laughs> and you guys just recently uh, hosted the U13 Provincials uh, uh, girls slow pitch. Right? Yeah. We did. Oh, no, I meant softball. Softball, yeah. I get mixed up. Softball, fastball. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I grew up with it being fastball. Oh, but they're very different. <laughs> yeah, for sure. Yeah. Um, and then the North Bay team did fairly well. Yeah, they made it all the way to the finals, lost by one run in the finals. It was a great game. I have a couple of video clips, uh, and we'll throw these in. I don't have them here, but actually we could get Ben to put them in. But uh, I, I, had, I was stopped from doing video from that game. <laughs> Tell me about uh, that ruling, because uh, at the time I didn't understand it, now I do. Yeah, um, I guess this new... OSST rule is we don't want uh, drones mm. flying around. Mm -hmm. um, I think some people misunderstood the rule and right. kind of made it out to be there are no videos ah, allowed right. to be taken. Because yeah. it didn't make sense when I was told about no, it. No, exactly. That makes sense. Yeah. Yeah. So the girls, uh, they uh, in the final, how did that game go? It went really well. It was back and forth. Um, some great defense. Actually, the game ended on what could have potentially put North Bay ahead. It was a great hit ball, and the left fielder just was able to make the catch, and that was the end of the game. We lost by one. Hmm. 
that would have been a good highlight to get. Yeah. Um, <laughs> it looked like great ball. Uh, the uh, the athletes at that age are uh, fairly advanced. Yeah. No, it is. It was great ball actually. It was impressive to watch. Aggressive base run. Yes. Yeah, I noticed that. Yeah. Yeah. Um, Sometimes too aggressive. Yeah. <laughs> Now, um, Blaze, right? Yeah. Any other teams this year do well? Um, we had a few other teams represent. I'm not sure anybody medaled in any tournaments. Um, that would Our U13 team was probably our strongest team, hmm. for sure. Bodes well going forward. It does, absolutely. That's yeah. why, actually, we ended up hosting. In June, we found out that there was no one hosting the provincial championship for U13. We knew we had a pretty strong team. So we put the bid through and ended up with the championship. Had a few months to get it ready, but I think it ended up going pretty well. How many uh, teams from out of town were in that? Uh, we, there were 24 teams competing. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, so, so 22 out of town teams. Sports tourism. And you had uh, North Bay Tourism involved with the help? Yes, absolutely. They were great. Um, they were on site the Friday night just to welcome the teams and kind of chat a little bit about the city and what the city has to offer. Hmm. Yeah, it was, it was really nice. Everyone we heard back from just talked so highly of the city and what we had to offer. They were, it was almost like they were surprised. But the one thing they kept saying was that they were really hoping we'd host again in the future and that they could come back. And and you guys utilized like six fields for that, I believe, right? Was it? Yeah, yeah. yeah. So not easy. That's a lot of volunteers, it and is everybody a lot of spent a lot yeah. of time. Yeah, we had forty five volunteers. Yeah, spread across the city. Yeah, it was a pretty wild weekend, but. And then, did you get any teams uh, thinking at first that they were coming to Thunder Bay instead of North Bay? Of course, always. Okay. Yeah. They wanted to pack their winter gear. Yeah. One of those things when you can get them up here, they finally realize, oh, it's actually not that far a drive, yeah. and oh, you have this. And, yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah, they were very impressed with our waterfront. I guess some teams went out to Duchesne. Oh, great! And yeah, they thought the place was wonderful. Well, it is a great place. It is. You absolutely. don't appreciate it sometimes. Yeah. yeah, you have to get outside of it to realize that what we have when we get back here. So, yeah. oh, uh, for that those finals, we were down at the Optimist Fields, uh, uh, Handley and. Um, Kelly? Kelly. Kelly. And I was talking to a couple of parents and they're like, you got a big lake over here. You got a big lake over there. And uh, it, uh, they were just amazed at the uh, the scenery and the environment and uh, the facilities too. Yeah. yeah. No, great little fields. I know in, you guys were kind enough. Uh, we were double booked one time and Kelly was where um, my son's team would normally play. And we ended up going to Amelia. And uh, I know that's where you guys spend a great deal, and it's got yeah. a lot of history for fastball and mm -hmm. and girls softball in town. And uh, it's it's just a great little spot when you're sitting there looking out at the lake. And oh yeah, it's, it's a great, just, it's a great, very quaint sort of very uh, yeah. Yeah, it feels good to be down at Amelia Field. Yep, right. takes me way back to my childhood because I watched many games from the bleachers, like following my uncle playing ball. And who's your uncle? Ken Besner. Now, um, you played um, in the ladies' league yeah. as well. Yeah. So is that, is that still going on? or? Yeah, so I have been part of the ladies' league, I guess, since I was 16. Mm -hmm. We got kind of pushed out of the minor girls. So we had a bond field team. Mm -hmm. um, we got pushed out of the league because we were winning and we were really strong. So they figured we should move up to the ladies' league. So we started playing in that league. So I played in that league until it folded. Um, well, it didn't really fold. I guess what we did was we ended up joining the Minor Girls mm. Softball Association. It was just more feasible, more affordable, um, and it allowed for the younger um, generation to see um, what we had to offer, like, firsthand, mm -hmm. and it allowed for growth. So that's what we've been seeing in the last few years. Are your, we still have some of the older ladies playing, I'm not counting myself in that group, of course. <laughs> um, but yeah, we have a lot of the younger girls coming up and wanting to play. Whereas for years, they were done after they were oh. finished in the minor girls. Well, that exposure usually does that. They just you know, they get called up for a game. And even if they don't play much, it's like, oh, yeah. That, yeah. that's something I can do. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. What are you seeing in terms of like opportunities to continue to grow? You think you guys have really grown by leaps and bounds, I'd say, in the last couple of years. Yeah, I think in the last few years it's really grown. I think, I don't know, I think the success, mm -hmm. this hosting this provincial 
championship in town really just excited everyone. Mm -hmm. Like suddenly softball, fastball has a place in this town where for many years I feel it went kind of dormant. Yeah. Right. Everybody went and played slow pitch and it just was really tough to get some people out playing. Um, I had a question about, I know this was the first year, this past season, um, there was a slow pitch, like girls slow pitch became an offsa sport. Um, and there was a, a small league that got started yeah. in town. And I was just really curious um, if you had any ideas why they would have chosen to play slow pitch as opposed to playing softball, which is ultimately where, you know, females will go to have the most exposure at, you know, an NCAA yeah, that level. Is, or. That's, a, that's an interesting question because I, I actually question it myself. Um, I only kind of looked into it, which is kind of weird because I've been involved with fastball for years. I sort of looked into it last year uh, when um, Todd's. Robillard from yeah, Scholar. from Scholard yeah. approached me and wanted to get something started, mm -hmm. and um, so I looked into what Offsa had to offer, and it's a it's a, um, like you said slow pitch festival. So it's not a championship, but okay. it's a festival, and yeah, I have no idea why it's slow pitch. Yeah, because for me, <laughs> <laughs> well, it's not. I, maybe I shouldn't share my opinion about slow pitch, but. I it's don't more feel that it than is more recreational, exactly, yeah. and not something I would see yo the younger generation playing, right? Like, well, again, when there's opportunities to go or, yeah. or do something or expand on it, you know, yeah. obviously the when you can get the you know the schools involved, then that helps to feed the club sports, and yeah. the club sports helps to raise exactly. the overall level of what's happening. Um, I know uh, my daughter also played. There's an elementary school. Yeah. I think they call it softball, but it's probably more of a lob pitch like or a three, three pitch. pitch sure. But even that, like the exposure, if you can start grabbing them from all those schools at an early age, you know, schools are able to make, you know, sometimes even multiple teams and it's just a great way to get them out. Mm -hmm. I know uh, in watching it, I looked at some of the equipment and then, you know, started going in my head like, okay, well, maybe we've got some stuff at baseball that we're not using anymore because some of that stuff definitely looked like it belonged in a museum. But <laughs> these are all the costs and the, the problems that happen yeah, there. But absolutely. I know um, I'm actually working with a group that is talking to the Jay's Care uh, Foundation and they have some school programs. So that's something we're actually going to go out to some oh, of the schools cool. and see if we could get, you know, and, and they provide some, some funding and, and some equipment to help get that out and offer some school programs where, you know, we can, you know, put some little teams together, get kids mm -hmm. going and, and get started, which hopefully will then translate to more kids playing in the summer season. Let's, let's steer it back to the NDA because we, we were launching this sports show. We're happy to have you for our first interview. Um, and uh, the top half of the uh, sports show, 30 minutes every Friday morning when it's going to come out, um, is going to be NDA, high school stuff. And uh, uh, tell me about what's happening this year in NDA, anybody hosting any offices and that kind of stuff? Yeah, we are actually hosting three offices this year. Um, I believe Chip was hosting uh, volleyball. And then Ferris will be hosting both basketball championships. So they've got the one coming up in November, and then they're hosting again in March. Anything different in the NDA this year as far as sports go uh, compared to other years? Not really. I don't I don't think. Nothing mm -hmm. I can see currently. At your meeting, you were talking about one of the issues you have to do uh, in each season is uh, deal with... Uh, uh, transfers, right? Yeah. And uh, what are the rules around transfers, people coming in, and how do you make those decisions? Well, we basically just follow the OFSA protocol. Mm -hmm. So we literally just use what they set as rules. These rules were set in place, um, I want to say around 2000, maybe a little after 2000, maybe a few years past. Anyways, um, it was because kids were transferring schools in order to fit sports programs better. So if you were a volleyball player, you would play at a school that was known to win championships. Mm -hmm. And I guess OFSA kind of started realizing that and set these rules in place where you couldn't just switch schools in order to play a sport. Mm -hmm. Basically, you had to have social reasons or academic reasons or you were moving in order to be able to play at a different school. Something uh, legitimate, yeah. That's right, exactly. 
I could see some coaches trying to talk people into switching schools, especially when things were changing in North Bay with a different couple different schools. Yeah, and that becomes very dangerous as well. Like you're not allowed. There's no recruiting. You're not supposed to be trying to get other kids. Like you could get into some pretty serious trouble. Yeah. Um, as a teacher, right. especially, yeah. trying to recruit kids to go to your school or to play a sport for your school. Paul had a good question come about the um, uh, the athletic programs at high school. Uh, we were talking about that earlier. Yeah, I mean, I mean, I was just wondering about again the difficulties they have. We were talking about recruiting for a reason that's maybe about winning championships. That's not what we want to have. But what about recruiting for just having enough athletes? in the school to, to feel to competitive, run. not even, yeah, competitive or just even having enough to safely play a sport if you, you know, only have seven basketball players. Like, are you finding, you know, what's changed in terms of um, the number of athletes you can draw from, the kids that want to participate in sport? Uh, are there barriers to that? Or what's what's changed in your role teaching to, you know... Encourage, encourage more encourage kids more, to play? Yeah. Well... Like, things are tough for kids, I find. Like, more so than when we were kids. That's mm-hmm. for sure. Like, everybody you talk to, they every, all the students that I have in high school, especially, like, once they hit grade 9 through 12, they all have jobs. Mm-hmm. So you're dealing with that whole baggage. Yep. Um, a lot of them are playing community sports, mm-hmm. which are also competing. And some of these community sports won't allow kids to play high school sports. Yep. So you're left. Hockey. That's yeah. right, exactly. So you're left with what you're left with, right? Mm-hmm. And and what about and maybe even like the kids coming out of elementary? Um, and we both have kids that are in elementary schools and growing through that. Has the gym or the phys ed component changed so much that you know kids don't want to participate or kids are hard to actively get to be a part of it? Yeah, <laughs> quite the wave I think we're going through, right? With yeah. like technology and everything being at, <laughs> the at their tip. fingertips. Exactly. Um, kids want to play less. Yeah. Right? It's hard to get a big group of kids wanting to come out and play a sport, a competitive sport. I, I think sometimes about how much we've raised the bar for the kids that play those competitive sports and the expectation and the the structure that's there and the kids' chance to play structured sports. I mean, you don't see kids playing road hockey anymore. Or yeah. We've got actually, I just noticed a great uh, basketball setup at Otise when I was picking mm-hmm. my son up. And that, along with the courts that are were just recently built downtown at the waterfront, um, I know they get used, but yeah, you know, wish you could see more We should more be kids. able to be doing a lot more with them. Mm-hmm. Yeah, absolutely. Let me put it in a way where people are actually thinking, are, are, do we have more coach potatoes than we do athletes in high school now? Well, if I can speak just from personal experience, I've been coaching high school sports since 2005. Um, when I used to run my basketball tryouts in September, I would have... 35 kids coming out. And we're not a very big school, right? Um, So I'd have 35 kids come out. I'd have to cut so many of them. Now, like last year, I had 13 kids Mm. come out to play. I kept all 13. This year I had 18. I ended up keeping 15. So I think the numbers are indicating that, yeah, we do have a lot less kids Playing, I'm not going to say they're couch potatoes. I'm going to give them the benefit of the doubt that they're do- doing something productive and healthy. But hmm. yeah, well, we we used to have the the uh, the um, badges that we'd get because we were you know we had athletic in, yeah participation yep. right yeah, yeah. oh yeah <laughs> and, participation and so everybody you know in your standing gym long class. jump and <laughs> yeah. doing the yeah. thousand meter or whatever do they yeah. do they do that at all at school now not very much no. no way. So if they're not doing, uh, if they're not keeping themselves in shape on their own, uh, and they're not involved with sports, and it's that's what you get, right? Yep, exactly. Like hmm. we try and run intramural programs, so try and go get those kids who aren't making the teams, right? So they're still being active, trying to offer them a variety of sports, mm-hmm. not necessarily the same standard sports that they would play if they played on a school team, right? So that kind of helps. But. And then I imagine, too, um, harder to find coaches. Oh, 
We're lucky. So I can speak for Algonquin. Algonquin is, has been great since I was a student there. For some reason, and I don't know if it's because the people who end up teaching there are also people who were students there. Yes. But we're okay. all there giving back. So we do have some community coaches, but most teams are run from or by people who are teaching there. But yeah, like other schools are just struggling. Like yeah. they can't run programs, certain programs, because they don't have anybody coaching them. It's tough. And I imagine that a lot of that comes from and I, some friends of mine that, you know, are, are teachers that, again, if it wasn't for them, the programs wouldn't run. And, yeah. and they're sometimes teaching, you know, track when they don't know anything about Absolutely. track, but yeah. they're, they're just stepping up to do it. Yeah. I imagine that's hard. The young teachers, I'm sure, take a lot of it on before mm -hmm. their families become their first priority. Yeah. And, uh, but then you have others that stick around and stick through it. Mm -hmm. but, and you drag your kids out. Yes. Like my kids have many meals at school with me because that's when I get to spend time with them is, you know, between school and game. Yeah. Do you know if the Trojans hockey team will ever get mm. back on the ice? Because it's been a couple of years now they haven't had a Trojans hockey team. Um, yeah, I know uh, Wayne Walsh that works at uh, Source for Sports. He's been a community coach. Um, I know Brandon Grew coached that, but then... As uh, school boards make re restructure and stuff, I think Brandon got moved out at one point from mm -hmm. Ferris. So again, you just you can't win for trying when the dedicated people are there. You know, I, is is coaching maybe not as regarded anymore within the hierarchy of the school system the way it maybe once was, and mm -hmm. people were hired knowing that yeah. they were. Well, it was coach. almost part of your interview. What are you so, prepared to yeah, contribute? Yeah, exactly. What are you prepared to contribute? Like, what are you going to do on top of teaching? Mm -hmm. What else are you going to do? Yeah. Right? And I don't think you can legitimately ask that question anymore. No. Like, I don't think it's allowed, but... That's interesting. Yeah. <laughs> so, you went to Algonquin? I did. And uh, what years were you in Algonquin? Uh, between 90 and 95. And how were your? What was your sports experience as a high schooler? Outstanding. Yeah. <laughs> who, who who coached you? In what sports? Oh, well, I played I played basketball, volleyball, badminton, and track. Mm. So I had many coaches. Oh, okay. There's a long list of them. Any favorites? Any favorites? Yeah, of course. <laughs> Do a I call had, out uh, for somebody. Lori Tremblay. Right. Yeah, probably my favorite teacher. I grew up wanting to be Lori Tremblay and. I did. I kicked her out of the office, and I took over her job, and <laughs> she still jokes around about that. Uh, Chantal Pichet-Rota mm -hmm. was another one, great influence, especially for girls going through what they're going through during high school. Like, those women were just inspirational. Oh, right on. Well, that's cool. We're going to be wrapping up pretty soon. Um, great interview so far. Is there anything that you want to share with everybody about... Uh, Either your uh, past sports uh, call out or what you'd like to see this year as far as uh, sports go? Just tons of kids playing sports yeah. and getting involved why and enjoying this, it. Why is that important? Because when they're doing that, it keeps them healthy mm -hmm. and happy. The benefits of being active are numerous. Well, they, uh, I've, I watch a lot of podcasts about health and uh, uh, physical activity is uh, your body's way of... Uh, uh, Feeling better, um, it it helps with depression, anxiety, and uh, it helps you sleep better. It, it all those things. So being active uh, and having some sort of outlet for your energy is uh, part of having a healthy life. Right? Absolutely. Yeah. The more kids playing, the better our future will look as well. Well, that's, it's that's definitely something you, th you start looking at some societal problems that we have and trying to find a fix for it. Oh. And it's like, well, if we can that's where it back starts. it up and get it started at an earlier age where we're hopefully, you know, it's now that's a preventative uh, course because we can hopefully set them up and uh, give them those better experiences. Mm -hmm. And whether it's, you know, their own physical literacy that they're going to have or that ability to, you know, just socially um, have that sort of expanded network maybe for, for kids that don't have that. Absolutely. I know for uh, from what I've been reading and listening to, um, you know, boys especially are very uh, not designed to sit in a classroom and not move, right? It, it, it leads to all kinds of um, uh, negative consequences. Um, and uh, they shouldn't be drugged up for school so that they can focus. Uh, yeah. they, they need to be active. So any outdoor education, any outdoor activity, any activity at all, 
uh, helps them focus better and, and mature. And yeah. yeah. In your role with the athletics, um, Algonquin started a hockey academy, yeah. uh, and Scholard has one as well. And yeah. Tim Lowe started that one yeah. with you guys. And um, my daughter Rory was fortunate to be there in the first year, and, mm-hmm. and I thought it was amazing for her. Um, is that something those those academies and that opportunity to maybe take advantage of? I mean, the one great thing if you're just looking economically on the um, the hockey academies, they're using our arenas when that otherwise would sit empty. Um, these kids are shuffling their schedules, and you've got great teachers, online learnings, allowed stuff. Can you see a day where maybe there's other sports getting that same level of attention? Oh, I would love that. Absolutely. And what are maybe some of the hindrances, or is it is it a people thing, like finding the person to be the coach? Is like yeah, finding what? the person who's ready to put the effort needed in running a program. Are the school like boards like on think, board? Because I think some help? some school boards are. Yeah, some are more supportive than others. Yeah, absolutely. Like you mentioned, like Scholard is always in mm-hmm. for stuff like that. Algonquin is as well. So our boards are very supportive. Well, very interesting. Well, hopefully we can have you in for another interview. Uh, I uh, I know you're really uh, you know enthusiastic about being in front <laughs> of the camera and the mics. Yeah. But, it's, uh, it's, my favorite, it's my favorite place to be. Yeah, yeah. Well, you did well. You did very well. Very well. Okay, so I'm going to wrap it up, and thank you very much. Appreciate it. And we're hoping to uh, work together with you to um, amplify what's going on in the high school sports. Yeah, that's great.